quick dash to an asteroid, collect a few samples, then back to Earth and off to the next asteroid to collect samples. Sound like the future to you? Well, you're wrong, because that's exactly what's happening right now. The OSIRIS-REx is bringing important rock samples from asteroid Bennu to us, and then flying on to one of the most dangerous asteroids in space. The culmination of a four-year journey. In 2016, NASA launched the OSIRIS-REx spacecraft with the goal of bringing a rock sample from an asteroid to Earth for the very first time in human history. In the past, asteroids occasionally hit the Earth and left behind geologically fathomable relics. But these are so strongly altered by the journey through the Earth's atmosphere and the impact that they cannot provide an authentic picture of how such an asteroid is constructed in space. From this new knowledge, researchers not only hope to draw exciting conclusions about the history of the formation of the solar system, but we on Earth also urgently need to know more about the rocks, because from time to time they approach the Earth in a dangerous way. The target of the trip was Bennu, an extremely old asteroid, making it a veritable treasure trove of information about the formation of asteroids and the solar system. Predecessor missions have previously photographed asteroids and even collected stardust from the tails of comets. Nevertheless, the landing of OSIRIS-REx was a unique project. Both the landing maneuver and the guidance were challenging for NASA. The goal was to collect a sample of regolith and dust weighing only about 60 grams from the asteroid's surface. Bennu measures only about 500 meters across. It is a feat to steer a probe to an asteroid that is hurtling through space at 101,000 kilometers per hour, and Bennu is not even one of the fastest asteroids. On its elliptical orbit around the Sun, Bennu often gets caught in the Earth's magnetic field and is both attracted to it and slowed down at the same time. We could say it's luck that also the Sun attracts asteroids, and so a kind of tug-of-war between Earth and Sun arises around the asteroid which holds the lump in its orbit. If Bennu were to hit Earth, we would have to expect a catastrophe of global proportions. Although Bennu is one of the potentially dangerous asteroids, there is no danger of an impact at present or for the next 100 years. The orbit of the asteroid can be calculated years in advance, and if it passes very close to us every 1.2 years, it will fortunately stay far enough away touch and go in space. OSIRIS-REx took about two years to reach Bennu, covering about two billion kilometers in flight. OSIRIS-REx was not able to head directly for Bennu, but had to make several orbits and go through some gravity assist maneuvers. Steering a probe weighing about two tons through space is an enormous energy expenditure. To make it work, researchers use the gravity of a planet or other celestial body to change the probe's trajectories or pick up speed. During the flyby of the celestial body, the spacecraft is deflected by its gravitational field, taking on some of the celestial body's kinetic energy. OSIRIS-REx performed such a gravity assist maneuver at Earth on September 22, 2017. During this maneuver, the spacecraft flew towards Earth in a curved arc and passed it at a relatively close distance. During the flyby, the probe was deflected by the Earth's gravitational pull. This caused a change in its direction of flight and an increase in its velocity. The gravity assist maneuver gave OSIRIS-REx the momentum it needed to continue its journey to asteroid Bennu. The spacecraft finally reached the asteroid's orbit on December 3, 2018. Then the real feat began, namely, OSIRIS-REx wasn't supposed to actually land on Bennu, but rather, just briefly swoop down from the sky like a bird, grab a sample, and then fly off again. The reason for this maneuver was the unusual nature of Bennu. From telescope observations, researchers already know that Bennu is not a massive chunk of rock. Rather, it consists of much loose and porous material held together by the asteroid's gravity. Once on site, NASA was amazed. Bennu's cameras showed a surface that, despite all expectations, was littered with many large chunks of rock. 
NASA was afraid that the entire construction of the probe had been a mistake. OSIRIS-REx was not equipped with any additional landing device, and the probe had to perform a touch-and-go maneuver at a soft and open spot. There was no other way. It took the researchers a year and a half to find a suitable landing site. No one wanted it to go wrong, and $800 million in construction and operating costs were now at stake. OSIRIS-REx floated in space for 505 days, taking surveys, snapping photos, and mapping Bennu's surface. Finally, in October 2020, the time had come. At NASA's control center, they were preparing for a first. Skillfully, the scientists and engineers steered the probe to a suitable landing site. Then OSIRIS-REx landed in the porous material of the asteroid, swirling a large crowd it was completely still, and every move, every maneuver, had to be spot on. NASA steered OSIRIS-REx unerringly onto the surface, and for a short moment the probe touched the porous material with the specially designed sample collector TAGSAM. Again, something unforeseen happened that could have ruined everything. The probe grabbed several 100 grams instead of just 60. Rock material clogged the loading device inside and for a few moments it looked as if the probe would be unable to maneuver as a result. But OSIRIS-REx somehow sorted it out on its own, closed its flaps, cleared itself of excess debris, and rose back into the air. NASA breathed a sigh of relief. A few hours after the touch-and-go maneuver, the control center on Earth initiated the return flight. In September 2023, the sample will be dropped over the desert in Utah and then collected. What danger does Bennu pose? Bennu is one of the so-called near-Earth asteroids. It regularly crosses Earth's orbit and is actually constantly in close proximity to our home planet. As you may know, most of the asteroids in our solar system are gathered in a broad band between Mars and Jupiter and at the very edge of the solar system in the Kuiper Belt. Presumably, Bennu was ejected from the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter at some point and then fell into an orbit closer to the Sun and also to us. Such events happen from time to time, and it's a major concern of astronomers to investigate the relationships that cause asteroids to move from outer regions into the interior of the solar system. Presumably, there have been true asteroid bombardments in the past, with large numbers of rocky chunks being fired in our direction. This is, of course, a scenario that no one on Earth would wish to see. There do not seem to have been any events of this magnitude in the last few hundred thousand years. In the early days of the solar system, huge asteroid impacts were much more common throughout the solar system. This can be seen, for example, by the numerous impact craters on Mars, the Moon, and also ancient impact craters of Earth. It's quite possible that the gravitational conditions within the solar system have stabilized and the bombardment by asteroids then altogether and durably becomes less. However, we cannot be completely sure here. We still know too little about the history of our solar system. By the investigation of asteroids like Bennu, a part of this knowledge gap can be closed. Asteroids and comets are very old celestial bodies. They are thought to have their origins in the early solar system, making them more than 4 billion years old. Bennu is classified as a B-type asteroid, which means it is rich in carbonaceous compounds. This is quite rare for asteroids. Carbonaceous compounds are building blocks of life. Currently, there are quite a few theories that assume organic compounds and water travel through space aboard asteroids and comets. Asteroids provide important information about the chemical composition of the early solar system and the possible origin of life on Earth. OSIRIS-REx becomes OSIRIS-APEX Scientists on Earth will have to wait until September 2023 when they will finally hold the first real sample for a porous asteroid like Bennu. Securely packaged, the sample should survive unchanged during its entry into the Earth's atmosphere. For the OSIRIS-REx probe, the journey is far from over. 
It already has the next mission and will change from OSIRIS-REx to OSIRIS-APEX while still in orbit. Fittingly, OSIRIS was the Egyptian god of cyclic mutability. Subject to birth, afterlife, and fertility, and it's exactly this heritage that the probe seems to carry on perfectly. Funnily enough, the asteroid Bennu has the shape of a pyramid. Bennu, on the other hand, is an Egyptian bird of the gods that resembles a heron. The asteroid was not named after its shape. Rather, it was the probe that was decisive for the name. When the OSIRIS-REx mission was on the starting blocks, the Planetary Society, University of Arizona, which was heavily involved in the project, announced a naming contest. A third grader suggested naming the asteroid after the Egyptian mythological bird Bennu. The boy was inspired by initial images he had seen of the probe. To him, the TAGSAM arm of the OSIRIS-REx probe, as well as the upturned solar panels, had looked like the graceful shape of a heron. The next target of OSIRIS will be the asteroid, Apophis. And also here, the mystic mission continues. Apophis was the Egyptian god of chaos, the destroyer of light and order. He was depicted as a serpent. This 370-meter asteroid could one day more than live up to its name. Already a few years ago, Apophis caused a stir when NASA had to briefly issue a warning. In 2012, Apophis narrowly missed Earth, and when the chunk returns in 2029, it will whiz past us at a distance of 50,000 kilometers. So, OSIRIS's next mission will be to give us much-needed data and samples from this near-Earth asteroid. The Origins, Spectral Interpretation, Resource Identification, Security, Regolith Explorer, or OSIRIS-REx, will then become the Origins, Spectral Interpretation, Resource Identification, and Security Apophis Explorer, OSIRIS-APEX. So, the exciting news about asteroid exploration will not diminish in the future, and we're happy to keep you updated. With that, we thank you for watching, and finally, Tell us why you're interested in space missions like this and what you think about asteroid exploration.